What is up, everyone? Samantha Farley here. I have type 1 diabetes. <laughs> I've had it since February 18th, 2021. Today, I want to talk about traveling with type 1 diabetes, especially traveling internationally with different time zones and all of that. Last week on Wednesday, I actually flew to London. It was my first time in London, uh, which was really exciting. My fiance's sister lives there, so we wanted to go visit her, but of course also see London since we've never been there. If you've ever traveled internationally with diabetes, you know how challenging it can be and all of the devices we need to bring and all of the insulin and supplies and everything we need to bring with us on our trip. Obviously this happens with domestic travel as well. You need to be prepared. However, international travel is, you know, another thing and it's a bigger thing that we really have to plan for. Going to London, this is not my first international trip. As you all know, it's only been two years that I've had diabetes, and this is actually my, that was my second international trip. But packing for London was crazy. I I had, a, I brought so much stuff, and I was only going to be there for five days. So we were only staying Wednesday to Monday morning. So I only had to change my Dexcom once while I was there. And I'm on insulin pens, so I don't have to worry about site changes for a pump. But you have to prepare for the worst case scenario when it comes to diabetes. So I brought three pens um, of each kind. So I had three of my Basiglar and three of my Humalog. Uh, Basiglar is my long lasting and Humalog is my fast acting. So I had three separate pens, which as you know, I'm never going to go through three pens in five days. But what if the airport security decides to take one? Or what if my bag gets stolen with all of my diabetes stuff in it? Or it gets lost in the trash somewhere? I don't know. Whatever could happen, you always have to make sure that you have, I say, three times the amount of what you would actually need, if not more, because you don't want to be in a different country and then not have your supplies. I mean, this is literally life or death scenarios. And so it's not something you want to mess with. For my Dexcom, I took three. I only needed to change it once. I also actually needed to change my transmitter, but I only had one of those. So I only took one and I was like praying that it was gonna work just fine because if it didn't, I don't know what I would have done. But I only had one and my you know, insurance wouldn't pay for another one at the time. So I'm like, all right, well, here we go. <laughs> but I did have three Dexcoms just in case, you know, one failed or whatever. And then I brought another one on top of that just in case I lost one or, like I said, worst case scenario, anything could happen. If they get stolen, who knows? And then I also brought a lot of needles for my pens, like a lot of needles, way more than I would need. And I brought two of my um, glucagons as well. Obviously hope I don't ever have to use a glucagon, but I brought two of them. And of course I told my fiance where they were. But anyway, I actually didn't even want to talk about supplies for traveling on this video, but here I am. You know, it's just one of those things that we have to talk about and prepare for. And it's also really hard to pack because it takes up so much space. And I'm on pens. I'm not even on a insulin pump, which can, of course, that's even more supplies that you need with your site changes being every three days. So I only took a carry on and that was difficult because I was stuffing everything in there and it, it's a little cold in London right now. So I was also packing boots and sweaters and sweatshirts. <laughs> it was kind of a tough, it was a tough packing experience for me. But what I really wanted to talk about today was time changes and how that can affect your blood sugars. I honestly don't know too much about this and you know how it really affects your blood sugars, like the scientific side of it. I just know my personal side of it, and I'm curious to hear if you all go through the same thing when it comes to time changes. So we are, because I'm in Denver, Colorado, we are seven hours behind London. We flew overnight. We actually had a nonstop direct flight from Denver to London, which was wonderful. We didn't have to change planes, but it really did screw with my blood sugars. So I maybe got an hour of sleep on the plane. I mean, you know how that is. It's kind of hard to sleep on planes. And I'm in, you know, 
the back economy. Like I was in the last seat. So it was not comfy by any means. And so I barely slept. And I know that like when you're trying to change your time zone clock, internal clock, you have to just stay up, right? And then go to sleep with the London people. So that's what we did. And we stayed up. I mean, we slept one hour on the plane, but then we stayed up with all of the London people and went to bed at their time. However, my blood sugars that day were all over the place. And I don't know if that's related to lack of sleep, which I'm sure it is, but also just the fact that I'm not on my typical life schedule. Like, you know, I wasn't doing my routine, which I do pretty much the same type of routines every day. Like I wake up, I work out, I do some work. I, you know, everything's the same, but it was not in London. And my blood sugars were all over the place. I feel like I was on roller coaster central with my blood sugars. It was dropping, it was rising, it was dropping, it was rising. And it was an extreme amount. And it didn't make any sense because I would eat like three glucose tablets and it would go up to like 200. And then I'd take a tiny bit of insulin and it would go all the way back down because we were moving a lot and walking around London. So my blood sugars were all over the place. And it's hard to just transition when you are living with a disease like type one diabetes well, I, it's not going to stop me by any means from traveling internationally and seeing the places I want to see, but you do have to take into account that your blood sugars are going to be messed up and it's going to be another added challenge to the trip that you're on. It just kind of the whole trip, all five days, I feel like my blood sugars were just all over the place, which is not really normal for me on a normal day. And I just, it was, it was, it was a big challenge for me and like having to figure that out. The other thing that was kind of difficult for me, which it, it's only difficult because of remembering what time it is, but I kept my Batsiglar schedule on the same time. So I didn't change it. So I had to take it at 2 PM London time, which I don't know if I'm supposed to change it, but I was only there for five days. So I was like, I'm just going to keep it for 7 a.m. Mountain Time, which was 2 p.m. Um, London Time. And so that's at what I what time I took it every single day. And I feel like that also just screwed me up because maybe, you know, like we weren't home and I was a little late or a little early when I was taking this Basiglar, my long lasting insulin, which also just screwed up with my blood sugar. So basically I'd most, I'm curious to hear if any of you have any tips or recommendations for when you're traveling overseas to different time zones or if your blood sugars are always messed up when that happens or if it's only because I just had lack of sleep and I was trying to get back on a schedule or what really was happening because my blood sugars were all over the place. Not to mention I got back yesterday. I got back to Denver and I was starving when I got when I landed. I landed at 4 p.m. and so I ordered some Chipotle for dinner because I was also exhausted because I was now on London time. So I was really tired and I ordered Chipotle, I ate Chipotle, which is a lot of rice. And I also had some Chipotle chips. I immediately passed out after eating that. And sadly, my blood sugars went to 324 last night. And for some reason, my Dexcom did not alert me of this, which I am very upset about because it was on loud. Like it was on the always sound button, it was on. And it was not alerting me in the middle of the night that my blood sugars were that high. And I was so tired that like, I wasn't even, you know, I wasn't checking my phone in the middle of the night because I was dead asleep. And I'm just so angry because I don't like to be above 200 ever. And I was in the 300s all night long. So for eight hours, I was in the 300s. And I was just so mad because the past five days, my blood sugars have been all over the place. And then to top it off, my final like night or my night home, my first night home, it was in the 300s. So traveling with diabetes is not fun and getting back to a schedule is not fun, but it's not gonna stop me from traveling. It's definitely not going to stop me from traveling. So here I am. And today my blood sugars, you know, have actually been doing better. They're leveling out right now. They're in 96. So that's great. But I'm feeling a little bit blah today because my levels were three in the mid 300s yes, yesterday and all night. So comment below and let me know your thoughts on traveling and if you ever get these crazy blood sugars. And I will see you guys next week in the next video. Okay, bye.